Alexander came out, and Demore explained that if he, if he relinquishes the title, that uh, he must understand that win or lose is bound for glory. He will not continue on as X Division champion. Um, and that's when he announced that they're going to have a, a tournament. Um, Alexander had no second thoughts and turned the title into more. Oh, sorry. Cage came out and told Alexander, that unlike him, who almost lost his career, he did lose his for several years. Let's pause on that for a second. Can I can I give myself a shout out? Is that shout yourself is, out? Is that weird? If, if you don't, who will? Exactly. So I actually I wrote a story about Alexander's kind of road to Bound for Glory, talking about this very thing about how in, you know, he he broke his neck in 2013, and then he didn't get uh, he didn't get he didn't get or he didn't take any time off. He he hurt it a couple more times, and in 2015 he broke it again. Whenever he was in a tag team match with him and uh, Ethan Page taking on Matt Seidel and uh, Chris Sabin. And it was so bad that he ended up having to retire in 2015. He came back in 2018. Next thing you know, he's uh, back on the scene. He gets signed by Impact. And the, the, the rest is history. And so I, I did uh, I did a small story on that. I didn't go into too much detail, but I really focused on that. And I focused on his uh, best matches uh, since he's been the X Division champion. So if you get the chance, go out and check my latest column. I, I dropped yesterday, man. I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I agree. It's good stuff. It was a really well-written article, Mike. I liked it. I like the story of Josh Alexander. I do think that he is the perfect likable baby face to lead this company right now. And I think we, I think we really lack a top baby face. I really do. Yeah. And I know we've been slow building Josh Alexander. They got to get him a little bit more comfortable with that microphone. And he, he could be the guy we're getting there. It's getting close. Yeah. And I, I know that some people might think that this is a stretch, but just stay with me. Don't I'm worry. getting vibes of 1991 and 1992 Bret Hart from Josh Alexander. I can just see it. Fresh off of a, a tag team where he was predominantly a heel. Um, now a singles wrestler turned baby face in the mid card, having excellent match after excellent match after excellent match. And then um, now he's, going into that main event scene uh, right off of the, you know, I guess the intercontinental title, but now he's the, you know, the X division title kind of similar stature. And then he's going right into in 1992 where he defeated Ric Flair for the, for the title. Um, I I'm kind of seeing vibes like that where he's getting comfortable becoming a main event player. His wrestling game is at the top is at the best it's ever been, but he's starting to get comfortable in that main event scene. That's the vibe I'm getting from him. 91, 92, Bret Hart. Mike, I'm going to steal that and I'm going to write an article about it. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's so, it's so, it. No, no, take it. You know, it's so it's so funny because I talked to Garrett yesterday about my article and I was like, as I was writing it, uh, I thought this. And then whenever I wrote it and I submitted it and, you know, Justin edited it and he posted it and I read it and I was like, JD should have wrote this, wrote this fucking article. JD should have been the one writing this thing because he, you because, write the impact stuff. Not I know, me. I know, but you're the better storyteller. Like I just, well, like, I appreciate it. I, I talk about what, what happens and I make opinions on it. That's what I do. But you're, you're like the gifted storyteller where you can actually go dig deep into someone's history and tell that story from their perspective. I don't have, I don't have a skill set. That's just not what I do. And I, I, I was like, when I wrote it, I was like, this is just a knockoff JD article. JD should be the one writing this thing. So I, I sent Garrett a message. And I was just like, I was just like, you know what? After, after Josh wins the title, I think JD should revisit this one and actually give it some justice because I think he can tell the story better than me. I think I'm going to, I think I'll steal it from you liberally. And uh, cause I do think it's great. <laughs> That's a great, that I, I think you're right. Cause they also have a similar demeanor and how they carry themselves. Yeah. Right? Like neither one of those guys is an overtly boisterous personality. Like in both the tag teams, Ethan page and Jim Neidhart were the big personalities of the team. Yeah. Right. And they're both the solid worker. I mean, I think that there's the Canadian thing is obvious, but I mean, like there's a lot, there's a lot to that man and i think that you know you, there's lines too to draw with rick flair and christian cage as being the guys that we assumingly take the title from like yeah. there's i don't i'm like i thought you were gonna say something crazy and i i agree with this i think it makes logical sense and i think that if 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 this gets published in josh alexander sees it i think he'd be very happy for the comparison because cool. you know who yeah. who wouldn't be yeah you know i i uh, did I did make the I made the comparison in my article uh, where I said he could be impacts Bret Hart. And that's what I was thinking about, but I didn't draw the parallels until until after I, I read it and then I started I saw him tonight and I was like, he's 1991, 1992 Bret Hart. And that is your story, JD. You need to write it. You're you're the storyteller. Yeah, you're the storyteller here. 
uh, bring it, send it to Garrett. I think he'll love it. Josh shared my article, so did his wife. So I, I think that that is a, a good play for both of us. This is a little inside baseball fight game media article talk <laughs> me and JD. But. <laughs> session. Sorry, Justin. Sorry, Garrett. We've done this without you guys. Yeah. Um, no, I, no. This is that's that's a really cool idea. I, I I dig it. I think you're, I think you're right. Like this whole thing, it clicks. And the uh, the more I think about it, because I was like saying I, before, I said oh, he's got to get a little more comfortable on that microphone. And then, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong because Bret Hart was a it was a very unique promo. Like. He, he wasn't what you would consider like an over the top, you know, guy who could talk you in the building, but there was a confidence and like, and like a professional bravado with Bret Hart where he said, I'm the best in the world. I'm going to beat you. And you were like, mm. fuck yeah, you are. Yeah. And you that's, are. yeah. And it was, it that's works. What Josh, that's what Josh says. That's it is like it's, literally the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is very, it's very similar. It's um, yeah, man, there's, that's, well done. Uh, by the way, right. a knockoff JD article is like the coolest thing anyone's ever said. I truly appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've uh, I've uh, ripped off you, and I, I've ripped off uh, Paul Fontaine, two of my favorite writers. So that's what I do. I just I just write knockoff articles and and uh, and share them everywhere. So I, hey man, you are always allowed to knock me off. I appreciate it. <laughs>